Good morning everybody, this is Dylan again with Java Technology Solutions. So I haven't done a video in probably at least three weeks. So I decided it's time to do a video and I'm going to do one on VPNs. Um, VPNs have become a natural way of life ever since COVID started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use OpenVPN as part of OpenSense in order to get that connection in there and uh, that way you can use it for work or for home or however you need to. So without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into it and hope you enjoy. So the first thing we're going to do is I have in my OpenSense box popped up right here. And um, so currently this is all a virtual environment. So I have a um, virtual firewall with a virtual desktop on the inside and I have a virtual desktop on the outside of my WAN link. So that's how this is uh, the topology is looking. So the first thing you're going to do, given that you already have OpenSense set up, um, and then you and we'll be going to download the the uh, OpenVPN agent for VPNing as as well. So we're going to hit System, and we're going to hit Trust, and then Authorities. So you have to create a certificate authority and a server site and client side certificate. So we're going to we already have a um, CA in here. It looks like so we'll go ahead and use that one, and then we'll go ahead and go down to Certificates. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is I want to start from scratch because I see that I already did something in here from before. So we're going to delete this CA and we're going to create a brand new one. All right. So it's going to be lab CA like you just saw, and then we're going to do create a new one. All right. So that can stay the same. We're going to change this to 4096. We're going to change the uh, digest algorithm to 512. Um, we can leave the the lifetime the same and then we're going to go down to United States and then we're going to go ahead and fill out this information so I'm going to be in Georgia uh, in the city of Augusta and uh, Jower Technology Solutions and then my email address is going to be support at JowersTechSolutions.com, and we'll leave the internal CA the same. That, that you can change that, but you don't have to. So we're going to save that, and this is going to create my new certificate authority. So since I deleted this, the certificate authority from before, it also wiped out the certificates from that CA. So now I'm going to have to create a new server side and a new client side one. So we'll go ahead and hit uh, create new internal certificate. It's going to be lab CA server. And we're going to use this to get authority of Lab ZA, and then we're going to do server. And then it's important the key links and the uh, digest algorithm need to match. So 4096, 512, and all this right here can stay the same. You can do um, internal CA right here as well, and then the rest of this should be fine. So it's save, and then now we're going to create. A username, and then we're going to come back and create a client side for that user. So go ahead and go to access users, and then right here I have uh, D Jower, so that's me. So I'm going to edit, and then so you know for the, for the lab purposes, I'm going to go ahead and create a new user. So we're going to say test user. Um, we'll do one two three four five. Don't ever use one two three four five as a password, but this is a lab, so that's okay. <laughs> Alright, so we'll do uh, test user, and we're, we'll leave out the email, we don't need one. And then we're going to go ahead and do, um, so again, just for the lab, I'm going to add him into admins, but I'll take him out later. Alright, then you can add an expiration date. Um, if you're in a business, I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm just going to throw in there January 31, that, that'll work. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the create a new uh, user certificate whenever we're creating this guy and hit save. And it's going to bump you over to the certificates to, in order to create a client side, a client side certificate. All right. And then test user lab CS is going to be client side. Again, 4096 on the key type, or excuse me, the key link. And then on the digest algorithm, 512. And then all this stuff can stay the same. Test user is fine. And hit save. So that's going to bump you back to the access uh, under the users, and then you just scroll down to the very bottom, 
verify that all this stuff is the same and then hit save alright so at this point you've created a certificate authority you've created a service certificate you've created a user and you've also created a, a, a um, client side certificate ok there we go I think I got that right alright so then you go down to VPN open VPN and then servers so this wizard walks you through pretty pretty easily so I'm going to delete this guy and create again alright so uh, hit the wizard and we're going to use the local user access so hit next and then we're using the lab CA next and right here on the service certificate you're going to drop down that and you're going to, the, uh, the service certificate you just created you're going to hit that one instead next alright so here's the here's the important stuff so we want to come in on the WAN side you can have it set up on any but I recommend the WAN side and then we're going to use the UDP alright so right here this is important you can change your uh, your default port however keep in mind that whenever this thing adds a uh, add the, when the wizard adds the rule to your WAN side it makes sure it matches on the uh, port so I'm going to use the default port so I'm going to leave that blank because it says the default is 1194 so that's fine and then right here I'm going to say um, lab VPN okay so this stuff is the same the uh, the Divi Helmet group can be 4096 and then encryption algorithm we're going to bump we're going to do uh, we're going to leave that the same for now that should be fine and then the uh, auth, get auth digest again that's going to be 512 Make sure we find the right one here. Okay, there we go. These things can be hidden in those lists sometimes, and it's aggravating. All right, so on your tunnel network, you're going to do this is going to be your your uh, network for your actual tunnel for your clients. So we're going to do ten dot. We'll do um, one dot twenty two dot zero, and then we'll do slash twenty four. And then we're going to do this is for your local network that it can connect to. So these are the IPv4 networks that will be accessible uh, expresses comma separated list so we're just going to put LAN here and in my case my LAN is going to be, I'm going to actually put the IP address so 1 0 that's 24 okay alright so the rest of this should be good I'll come back and fix it if I need to alright so compression go ahead and use adaptive compression and some of the stuff I have memorized from going through it on the documentation. Um, if there's anything in there that you need to change for your business or for your home, then by all means go for it. And then I'm just going to use 8.8.8 .8 as the DNS. If you have an internal DNS, then use that instead. I believe all this, the rest of this stuff is good to go. I'll come back and change it if I need to. There was one setting, and I'm not seeing it at the moment, but uh, basically, it's a setting where you can disable the IPv6, and if you're not using IPv6, then you can disable it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and save this as is, and then I'll uh, edit it if I need to. Alright, so here's the important part. Go ahead and check both of these. That way it'll add a firewall, a, a rule to your firewall on the WAN side, and will also allow traffic through your VPN to your internal network. So hit next, and then finish. I think that's where I think we're good to go. So I'm gonna pop back in here really quick to make sure that setting was disabled. Okay, so right here, disable IPv6. Go ahead and check that box. And I think the rest of this is good to go. So we're gonna hit save. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and go to client export. Alright, so 1194, we're good to go on that. Um, the host name is, so I'm picking up a dot uh, .149 address. Again, this is a private IP address. So, if this was a edge route or edge firewall, then that would be your public IP address. So, the address that you're getting from your ISP. Since this is a lab or an internal network, um, I'm getting a private IP address. And that's another thing uh, on the WAN side. If you're using this as an internal firewall rule and you don't have a public IP, then make sure you go to your WAN and then make sure you say do not block no, private networks or Vogon networks. That way that your VPN connection can go through.
Alright, so since, since I pointed that out, we'll go back to this. Alright, so client export, 1194. Um, I would highly recommend hitting uh, disable password save. Uh, that way that you're not passwords aren't saved and the thing's grabbed. Alright, so we're going to use test user. And we're going to hit save on that, and it's going to download. Alright, so here's your config file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bounce to a machine that's outside the uh, WAN side of this of this network, and I'm also going to take this and copy it. All right. So what you want to do with this guy is you want to go grab your OpenVPN and load it on. So I'm going to download the Community Edition. If you're a business or have a business, I would highly recommend you get the business VPN or pay for the personal VPN. Uh, that's one thing. Any licensing uh, that you would need for any of the things that I do, then by all means, go get it, go buy it, whatever you have to do. But just make sure that you're doing it right and legally. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, get the Community Edition just for the lab. Want to download the 64-bit uh, MSI installer? Okay, there we go. So you're going to run this setup. might take just a second. So while this is doing that, I'm going to go ahead and open up a notepad and paste that uh, config into it. Uh oh. It did not like that. go grab that config again right, give me just one second here I might have to go to the firewall and grab it All right, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. I had to readjust. So, uh, right now we're back on the uh, computer that's sitting outside the WAN link, and so right here we have our VPN test user, and then our Open VPN. So, after you've already loaded the Open VPN software onto your computer, um, you'll, you'll have to open it again. So that'll be indicated by the little box down here. So what you'll do is right-click on Open VPN, Import File. And then you'll navigate to wherever your file, your config file is, and then click on that, and then hit open. It'll say import successful. And then from there, you come down here again, and then right click and hit connect. All right, so now I'm going to do test user, my which is my username, and then do one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to connect. And then it'll tell me I'm in there. Alright, so I'm successfully connected with that IP address. Alright, so here, here's how you know it does work, uh, for sure. Is I'm going to go back to my uh, desktop that I was using. I'm going to go make sure the remote desktop services are enabled. See the wrong button. So we're going to allow remote uh, remote connections on this. And hit apply and hit OK. And then we know this is Win 10-03. Alright, so I'm going to navigate back to the VPN client. All 
Alright, so keep in mind that I'm on a separate network um, than, uh, than the actual box that I'm remoting into. Uh, I've already set this up several times for a couple businesses, and I know for a fact that it works, so we're going to go ahead and shoot for it and cross our fingers because sometimes IT just breaks. Okay, so that's not going to work. So let me go back to um, the internal box. I'm going to actually do the, use the IP address. So this guy's got a 10.1.1.13, so let's go back. 10.1.1.13. Okay, here we go. So at this point, I've got credentials, so uh, if we want to, we can go back in there and do that. Um, let's go look at the actual credentials here. Okay, so it's just user. shouldn't be a password on this but uh yeah I'm gonna go add a password to it really quick and see if that will make a difference so this is a separate issue guys but you see the VPN works and uh, you're able to connect to it I'm gonna go in here really quick and change this just to make sure that I'm not doing something wrong So we're going to use one, two, three, four, five, and hopefully it doesn't give me a hard time about the password. Okay. All right, so now that's in there, let's go back to our external machine, and then we'll do it again. Okay, so it needed a password. All right, so from here you'll see name in the certificate from the remote computer is Win1003 hit yes and then it's going to shoot me straight in there through RDP and now you see that I'm actually in, this, in the machine through the firewall so guys this is how to create uh, a VPN connection with OpenVPN along with OpenSense uh, I know this was a little chopped up uh, or, or a little had to troubleshoot a little bit but please uh, like the video subscribe to my channel I appreciate every bit of support I get if anybody out there needs any help uh, please by all means reach out to me uh, you can go to my website, JowersTechSolutions.com, or you can uh, call me or on on my phone or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, thank you all very much for the support, and you have a good one. Thanks.